What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with immersive engineering. Now in today's episode we're going to be expanding upon this ore processing setup right over here. Now the ore doubling portion of this is already fully completed. It's working perfectly and I'm really happy with it. And I was wondering what we need to add on to this to actually finish off the system. So I decided we are going to put in an item sorting system that's going to go right in this corner over here. And it's going to take the ingots and whatever we have cooking in these furnaces, sort it, and then put it in chests that are going to be along this back wall right here. So it's going to be a really small setup. It doesn't need to be really complicated or anything. And I think it's going to look really cool because we get to use a lot of conveyor belts. Uh, but that's not the best part. The best part is that it's actually really cheap to make. Uh, and it's really simple to set up. So I'm pretty excited to get things going in here. And first things first, we're going to go over the main block of the system, which is the item router. So this is pretty much the only block that immersive engineering has to actually sort items. So I'm kind of forced to use it. Obviously, if you're playing with immersive engineering along with other mods, there's probably better options to actually sort items. Um, but this one works for us, and I'm pretty excited to mess around with it. So if you look at it, you can see that each side is color coded. The bottom one is going to be dark gray. And you can pretty much input blocks on any of the sides and then output blocks on any of the sides too. So if we click on it, you can see you can add filters for each of the sides. And here they're labeled bottom, top, north, west, south, and east. They all have the different colors on them. And along with that, they have these three buttons that you can toggle at the top of each side. And you can see the first one is th so that things are filtered based on or dictionary. Second one is filtered based on NBT data. And last one, of course, is the fuzzy filter. If you're filtering stuff like gear or anything that really has a damage value, uh, it'll just ignore that so that it doesn't get a little messed up if you put a damaged item in there or if a damaged item goes in there and needs to get filtered. But I actually don't need to use any of those because we're not going to be using anything with a damage value and we don't have to worry about any of the NBT data or or dictionary stuff just because we only have immersive engineering so there's no conflicting mods, no conflicting ores or ingots or anything. So that's what makes it especially easy to set up. So we need to start things out right over here at the furnaces because this is where we are going to be getting the items onto the conveyor belts. So I'm going to dig out right below these and I was wondering initially how I could get items onto the conveyor belts but then I realized that I can actually just put hoppers down and have them drop directly onto it. So let me get my hoppers out right here. Pretty much you're going to act just like you're putting a hopper onto a chest. You're going to shift right click onto the side of it. It is a little annoying because the block is a lot smaller than a chest. But if we were to put something in here, we'll just throw some cobble. You can see it drops it out one by one onto the conveyor belt, which just pushes it out. And it works perfectly. So it'll work that same way when anything in the furnaces gets completed. And just grab this out so it doesn't keep spitting it out. And along with that, we're just going to bring it up here. Because I said I'm going to filter it over here in this corner. Got to bring this up. And I'm going to try and keep it as close to the wall as I can, just so that it doesn't take up a bunch of space in the middle of the room. Now, I have to say, I am really in love with the fact that I can just place these down, and they can be oriented in whatever way they are, and then I can just, whoops, I can just right-click them and rotate them. Super nice, because a lot of the time, you actually have to face a certain way to place down conveyor belts and get them correct. But we just got to rotate all of these so that they are bringing it over here. And this very last one, we have to bring it up because I'm actually going to be elevating the item router one space into the air. So we're going to place it like this. And we can come back over here and just grab one stone block and fill in this right here. So this portion is done. Everything is now getting brought into the item router. And I'll show you guys if we threw an item down here, it'll get carried up there and it should not go in because there's nowhere for it to go. But if I were to place down a conveyor belt right below it, it would automatically spit it out down there just because. Uh, there's only one place for it to go, and we actually don't have any filters in here. So, let me just get this block so it's not... Oh gosh, that was, that was a bad idea. It's really hard to get out of these things, so we just got to break it. And take some fall damage, which is a little weird, but uh, get it back up there. Okay, so I'm actually only going to be using two filters. I'm going to be using the bottom one and the middle one right here, because we're only going to be filtering into two different chests. We're going to have a building block chest, which is going to be for stuff like stone and glass. And then we're going to have uh, kind of a resources chest, I guess, which is going to have all of our ingots and stuff in it. So we can grab out our chests, which are actually already in our hot bar. And these are going to go, I want to line them up with the doors right here. So they're going to go right like this. And we'll just have two right here. Obviously, I will need to expand upon this later. But for now, we actually don't have that much that needs to be sorted. So we need to bring things over from the bottom one. And we need to bring things over from the top ones. Now, if you're messing with these and you're placing them down, they can sometimes connect. So I think if I were to like break these, I'll try and show you guys just so you know what I'm talking about. 
But if I were to place ones like, oh, I guess they won't connect. Sometimes they'll connect so it'll go like, it'll go like this and it'll just randomly connect to the upper one, but you can easily just alter it. But so now we need to go through and make these all facing towards the chest. So rotate them all around and do the same for the top. And then we can just put the filters in and the system actually should be working. Oh my gosh, I keep over rotating them by one. Okay, there we go. So now all we have to do is add the filter and it should put the items directly into these chests. So if we come in here, I'm gonna make the top one or I guess I should say the middle one, which is blue. I'm gonna make that the filter for blocks. So we're gonna put glass in there and we can put some stone in there. And obviously if I come up with anything else that needs to be filtered out, I can just put it in here. It's really easy to just access this, especially because it's not really hidden anywhere. It's kind of out in the open. Uh, and then the bottom one, which I said is gonna be dark gray, is going to be where the ingots go. So I think I should have one of each ingot in my inventory and make sure I'll have those later, just so that you know if anything ever comes in here and doesn't get filtered, uh, it's kind of gonna get backed up here. So it is a little important that I do have a filter for each one to let it through. So we have copper, nickel, aluminum, lead, iron, then we need silver and gold. And I think that should be it for now. If I come across anything that I don't have filtered yet, like if I, uh, I need to filter diamonds eventually if I start still touching them and throwing them in there because I will get two diamonds. Um, but then there's a whole nother issue where it actually doesn't need to go through the furnace or anything. So I guess I can worry about that later. But now I can show you guys, let's go and throw some cobble in here. And we can throw some cobble in this one too, just because. And we can watch it finish in these and then get spit out onto this. And it should output it onto the top one and it should go into the chest. So you can see, it looks a little bit glitchy there and everything works and it spits it out right into this chest. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're using conveyor belts to auto input into double chests is that if you're inputting from one side, it's gonna put it in the top section, so it'll put it right here. And if you're inputting from the other side, it'll put it in this section right down here. So it kinda of gets a little messed up because um, obviously it registers one side as one chest and one side as the other. So it'll register one side as the top three rows and then the bottom or the other side is the bottom three rows. So I'll just show you guys what I'm talking about right over here. Uh, so if you were to throw some stone like this, it should input it right down here. So you can see it's registering that as the bottom three rows. So if you're wondering why that's happening, it's mainly just because of what side you're inputting it on. So you need to input it to this portion of the chest, but that's not really an issue we have to worry about right now, mainly just because we're inputting it to the correct side. And you can see it actually looks really cool. So I really like the way things are turning out in the base right now. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully you guys can use the item router a little bit. Obviously, like I said, if you have other mods that are options for sorting, this is probably not your best option, but I still think it's fun to mess around with. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, feel free to give it a like. I apologize that it's a little bit of a shorter video, but the project today really wasn't a super long one or super complicated one. Also, I hope you guys have a phenomenal Christmas Eve, and if I don't have a video up tomorrow, I hope you have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone, and I will talk to you guys later.